Hey everyone, Adwins here with another unit review. This week we have a rerun of the second Suzune collab, where four magical girls from Hozuki City catch wind of rumors of a ghost or serial killer who asks for your name before killing you, and begin to investigate its validity in Kamehama where the rumor started. Readers of Suzune Magica and or players of the first Suzune event will know that this rumor refers to Suzune herself, but I'm sure you all know rumors are more than they appear in Kamehama. Anyway, let's get started with a super adorable Hinata Matsuri, with her sonar hair buns, cute boots, and them big ol' hands! She's a balance type with great defense. 13k is a lot, but she's surprisingly average in the other stats for the archetype. Her connect allows the target to evade, but also to ignore evade. This is flavorful to her ability to detect things with her sonar hair buns, allowing the target to know where to strike and how to dodge. Practically, it's okay. As I've mentioned before, evasion is powerful in mirrors, so having an answer to it is great. In PvE, you can use the evasion defensively to keep someone alive or just to avoid a big attack. Her magia only hits one enemy, but applies magia and skill seal, and more importantly, stun. Stun is always helpful, but the other two are kinda niche. Her spirit enhancement gives decent boost to her magia and discs, but the most notable nodes to look at are her anti-counter and evade, and her chance to stun on attack. This really cements her role on the team as a sort of disruptor, negating or bypassing tricky measures the enemy sets up. Stun and anti-evade are great, especially 40% on the latter, but I still feel like all these abilities are too many silver bullets and not enough targets. I think I'd like Chance to ignore defense here a lot, but designing's not my job, I guess. And to be fair, Matsuri and Haruka were the first units to come out with spirit enhancement. Sure, we had a couple batches of units that had SE added, but these two were among the first to come packaged with it, so I could understand that they didn't quite know how to balance or design it yet. But even with the rerun, there haven't been any changes made, and as it stands, she has decent bulk, but her role in the team is to disrupt very specific targets in various specific situations, and this game just makes it very hard to find a home for units like her. Now for Kanade Haruka, who originally debuted as a capped 3 star, but with this rerun, gets her 5th star. As a support type, her stats are what you expect. Garbage, even for an uncap. 10k defense is average, I guess. Her connect grants charm, which I guess transfers her sexy nurse aesthetic, over to the target so they seduce the enemy or something. More useful than Matsuri's, as you would rather control who skips their turn instead of who stays alive. Her magia is interesting. She gives herself provoke, damage cut, and regen, and debuffs the target's attack, even if the debuff is just for one enemy, and even though her defense is kinda low, all this combined really ups her survivability. Sure, it's all in her magia, but as a support type, she actually gets better MP generation, so she'll get to it more easily. Plus, she has the strat sprinkled throughout her spirit enhancement, so you don't need magia to perform her tank roll. The active charm on all enemies is great, while provoke draws attacks from people not seduced by her feminine wiles. She also has Skill Quick, which will hopefully proc more than once in a fight with all this damage reduction. Haruka has a more defined role than Matsuri, drawing attacks away from her team, and is given fairly effective tools to execute it. Even her personal is a great asset to her. She does, however, have poor stats, which puts her at a greater risk. You could stack her with defensive Memoria, like a normal tank, or even have units like Shizuka or Hiroyachi, who passively buff the party's defense. Lastly for today, we get a new chapter in the story. It's a doozy, to say the least. <laughs> but with the new chapter comes a new banner. Finally becoming playable is the badass Judy Oba. I absolutely love Judy's design. She's a dragon with a fucking flamethrower. Giving the tank dragon features was genius, and the flames on her jacket are sweet. The only problem I have with the art is that it really doesn't show off her rough personality. Here she looks sweet and hesitant, which she is not. Anyway, she's a Fire Blast Gorilla with sky high attack, surpassing both Kyoko's. No, my girls! Her connect gives blast up instead of attack up, which narrows its scope, but at least it makes it clear what you want to do. Anti evade is a good incidental effect for mirrors, like I mentioned before, and burn gives you more incidental damage, but isn't nearly as important. At least it's guaranteed. Her Machia also guarantees burn, and also grants herself flame attack up. Yes, herself and not the team. Kinda wish it was for everyone. 
Ignore Damage Cut is better nowadays, since it's on a lot of SE passives, but it's probably the least good thing about this Magia. In her Spirit Enhancement, she has a decent chance to burn an Anti-Evade, damage up when low on health, and two Blast MP nodes. But to be honest, Blast Salutation has not proven to be that valuable. It only gets you a flat amount of MP per target hit, and cannot be boosted by anything, except having Axel at the front of the combo, but that's not nearly as worth it. The active gives her an attack boost and anti-provoke. As important as Sudachi is in high-level mirrors, this is actually pretty relevant, since Sudachi's Magia gives her provoke. Anti-voke isn't really common, but Jury has it consistently, allowing you to pick any target you want instead of wasting your attacks hitting the pillow fort Sudachi. In most other areas of the game though, anti-voke is whatever. The beefy attack boost is still very welcome though. So is Juri just a power crept Kyoko? It honestly hard to say. Juri has bigger passive blast bonuses, but then both Kyokos have really powerful blast actives. They can all burn and have a chance to ignore evasion. Juri can also potentially break the buff limit with her flame attack up. And Juri's anti-provoke is kind of important in top-level mirrors, but that's like top-level mirrors? Ah, uh, these differences are so minor, I really don't think that Juri really outpaces the past Kyokos. At least, not enough to make them obsolete. Probably. I'm not sure. I'm tired. Sorry guys, no proper outro this time. I'm an app. Drop them!